Hey, church family, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, I hope you've had a great week so far, and uh, we're looking forward to spending a few moments in the Word of God tonight. We'll be in 1 Kings chapter 17. We're going to continue our study uh, on the, the, the man, the prophet of God named Elijah. Uh, before we do that, just a quick reminder, be praying for the Tinsleys. Uh, there are missionaries this week. Uh, David and Karen will be out this week, Thursday and Friday. Uh, as he mentioned, Sunday, big group of college students coming to do outreach and evangelism. And uh, so be praying for them this week and hold them up. Also, check the prayer list in your email, or if you uh, picked one up Sunday, you already have it. Be praying for people as well. And uh, be praying for the services on Sunday. A great report. We had uh, several people in our Spanish congregation that joined the church, new members, last Sunday. And we thank God for them. Also, we had one uh, of our ladies in our church who trusted Christ as, our, as her Savior Sunday after the morning service. And we're so excited for her. Be praying for uh, her. Uh, I'll let uh, her say a word on Sunday about that. She's also going to be following the Lord in baptism on this coming Sunday. So please uh, make sure you're in your place, uh, whether you come to the early service or the late service. Uh, our baptism will be right around 1115. So if you come to the early service, I would encourage you to stay, get a cup of coffee with on us and uh, stay for the first part of the second service so you can see the baptism be an encouragement to this dear lady. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll be in your place this coming Sunday as we come together to worship the Lord. Uh, this uh, Sunday as well, we'll be taking a vote. And because of the multiple services, uh, I know it's hard for us all to get together. Uh, so we will have ballots. If you didn't pick up the proposal, you can do that. And uh, it's just to increase some funds. Um, as we told you we would do when when we got the estimates in, we're working through and uh, well on our way to um, really sign some contracts to get this air conditioning project going as well as a few other projects needed here at the church. So uh, we want you to be a part if you're a member. So make sure you pick up a ballot and you can uh, cast your vote on Sunday at either service. And then lastly, couples, don't forget this Friday night, we're going to have a time of fellowship together. It's a potluck, 7 o'clock. Please register, get the link, and register. Child care will be provided. Come, even if you have to come a little bit late. We're going to eat together, fellowship together, and uh, jump into the scriptures. So I hope that you'll plan to be there. Uh, tonight, 1 Kings chapter 17, and we've been studying the man Elijah, and his name means the Lord is God. And you'll remember that he had to make a decision. God came to him and called him, said, I have a job for you to do. And he, in essence, responded by saying, you're my God, and I'm going to do it. And his message was a bold one. He was to go in and to declare God's message to a wicked king, King Ahab. And that message was, Ahab, you've led uh, Israel, my people, uh, into idolatry. Uh, they're trusting in this false god, Baal, um, thinking that somehow Baal's providing rain and and uh, sunshine, and, and Baal is, is causing the crops to grow. And so uh, I am going to uh, hold back the rain. There'll be a drought and famine. Uh, when it's all over, it will have lasted three and a half years. And Elijah goes in and proclaims that message in the face of the king and runs out of the palace. And God takes care of him. And God tells him to go uh, set up a camp, and he feeds him and, and waters Elijah. Um, he uses some unusual means to do that. And God begins to teach Elijah that when you follow me, I'll take care of you. And um, he feeds him with a raven, a dirty bird, uh, provides him some water uh, from a brook. And then uh, we know God takes care of us. And it's a great reminder of that as we follow him. We get in chapter 17. And as we left off last week, we find that God uses uh, a widow woman to also meet his needs. And God moves Elijah outside of Israel, up into Gentile territory, up into pagan idolater uh, homeland. And a woman who had lost her husband, a woman who had no resources. And yet God chooses to use her uh, to feed Elijah, the, the man of God. 
and Elijah has to trust, and Elijah has to cast his burden on the Lord. And, you know, like all of us, when it comes to faith, uh, we are required to act upon what we believe and know to be true. Uh, obedience is a part of that, and so he steps out, and you remember God blesses him. Uh, you remember in, in chapter 17 that Elijah meets the woman and asks her what she's doing in verse uh, 10. And she says, I'm getting some sticks. I have enough food for my son and I. One last meal. We're going to eat and then we'll die. And Elijah said, well, uh, why don't you do something for me? Uh, take that, that meal, that food, and give it to me first. And if you'll do that, God will take care of you. And you know that she does, and it's a step of faith for her. And she begins to respond to the God of Israel. And sure enough, uh, you see in verse 14, uh, Elijah gives her the promise that the Lord God of Israel saith, the barrel of meal shall not waste and the cruise of oil shall not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went and did, again, the lessons for all of us, cast your care on the Lord. Think about this this dear woman. She didn't grow up in Sunday school. She wasn't Jewish. She didn't have any concept of really the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She was fearful. She was worried. She had no resources, um, and she was going to learn she could trust in God. If you don't have God in your life, you should be fearful and you should worry. But if you had know the Lord, there's not a reason for that. But we are tasked as Elijah, as this woman, to step out on faith. And she does. She gives him. And she, in verse 15, and he and her house did eat many days. It wasn't some fluke. It wasn't some accident. They had enough for many days and, and for those next three and a half years, or the three years still remaining. And uh, verse 16, the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. God kept his word. God always keeps his word. And this woman learned a lesson, by the way, a lesson that Elijah had learned and was still learning. That if you um, invest in God's kingdom first, he will fulfill his promise to take care of you. And what a great principle. Think about Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So that's kind of where we left off last week. And we're thankful for God's provision in our life. And I, I hope that you are trusting in the Lord and you are casting your care upon him. This is finally important. I want us to just kind of stay here, and, and then we're going to finish this chapter tonight. Because what, what you realize, and uh, and, and you, you could probably attest to this in your own personal life as a Christian, that God's ways are not our ways. God's processes, the way he thinks things through, um, uh, are not definitely the way that we would often think things through. Uh, should should happen or, or should develop. But God's process um, can never be um, uh, questioned uh, or doubted. And certainly if we will allow God's process to take its course in our life, um, we won't have any regrets. And I, I want you to consider a couple of things tonight. Uh, I want you to con consider this, that in the middle of this entire event, um, you know, God calls a man and begins to work in this man's life, Elijah. And Elijah has to make some decisions. And Elijah determines that he's going to rely on God. And he's going to trust in God's care. And he's going to uh, depend upon God's promises. And he allows his faith to, to be challenged and tested. And he steps out. And he sees how God protected him and he got out of the palace and he sees how God's provided for him in some unusual ways. And so far, everything that God said would happen uh, has happened. And, and, and that's a, an amazing um, uh, event that has taken place so far in Elijah's life. And I want you to think about this. Had Elijah not gone through these steps 
he would have been ineffective in helping this widow woman and her son to go through this process in their relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So think about that. Elijah needed to uh, uh, be the forerunner, as it were. Elijah needed to be able to say he had practiced uh, what he has now was preaching to this woman. And in our lives, again, it kind of dovetails in what, what we were speaking about last Sunday with trials and testings. And, and I mentioned this, that uh, in our trials and testings, what we often uh, forget or, or don't consider is that God is using these trials and testings to put us into a position uh, to, to stand on a platform where we can shine bright for him, where we can influence other people, that that's all part of his picture. It's all part of the process. So the things that I am being asked to do and, and the things that God is, is, is leading me to do in my life today, it has future purposes to it. It, it will have uh, future benefits if I am willing today to walk by faith and to walk in obedience to the Lord's directive in my life. The same thing is true for you. And maybe you're struggling with some things in your life today and there's some decisions and there's some steps that you need to take and, and, and you're just hesitant and, 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 and you're just questioning some things. But please understand, it's not even just about making you better today and bringing you closer to the Lord and putting you in a position to be blessable, which all those things are true. But what you are doing today and experiencing today and, and how God is leading in your life today also has future benefits or future ramifications. And Elijah needed to experience these things first. I mean, think about this woman. He is saying to her, look, God's making you a promise. And if you'll follow through, he'll keep his promise. Well, he had to experience that too. God said, go into the palace and I, I'll take care of you. You'll get out and, and I'll provide for you. Uh, think about he is saying to this woman who really has no knowledge and no understanding about um, Israel's God, and, and, and he's saying to her, look, uh, put your your devotion and your interest and your faith in him. Um, make him your priority. Um, put him first, and if you'll do that, he will um, take care of the rest. And again, uh, same with Elijah. Uh, he could have said, no, thank you, God. I, I, I call someone else to, to be this prophet. I'm just going to go and, and live out the rest of my days. But he puts God first, and what happens? And God provides for him. God takes care of him. God begins to build a ministry and an influence that will um, succeed Elijah. And so uh, all these things that he's telling her, you know, put God first and trust in God and know that God cares for you. And if you're really going to trust, you're going to have to put it into practice these are all lessons that Elijah um, fairly recently has had to um, uh, learn uh, and experience himself. And so um, take encouragement from that, that what you're going through now is going to uh, be a help and equip you to better and more effectively instruct and teach and encourage others. Um, and, and that's really part of God's process. Others, maybe your family, maybe your spouse, maybe your children or grandchildren, uh, maybe uh, your friends uh, who are uh, a few steps perhaps behind you in your spiritual growth. Uh, maybe it's uh, even an unbeliever like this woman was until Elijah um, was introduced to her, uh, that there are unbelievers. God wants to use you and me to meet and so that we can introduce the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And because we have walked this path and learned that we can trust him, we now are equipped to share that truth with those who have yet to believe. Um, it was imperative that Elijah walked through these experiences so that he could effectively help someone else. And that's really a second thought to this, that um, even in the midst of this drought, even in the midst of this famine, even in the midst of God working at one level to judge Israel, to get Israel's attention, to uh, really shake 
uh, King Ahab and Jezebel. That, that's one storyline. But even in the midst of the storyline, God still knew that there were people out there living in the midst of this corruption and confusion who, when they heard of him and were given the opportunity, God knew they would respond. And he sends Elijah out of Israel into Zidon, into the Phoenician area north of Israel to a Gentile woman uh, because he desired for her uh, to know him. And can I just assure you that even in the craziness and confusion of, of all that happens, it seems like in, in our daily lives and in this city and the country and in the world in which we live, God knows there's still people who when presented with the truth of him uh, will believe. They'll take that step and he wants to use us to share it. And so we can't get bogged down or uh, distracted or disrupted from really the bigger issues. And again, we need to understand that's God's process. I want you to also see one more thought. The story doesn't end. So for many days, um, they eat, God provides. But all of a sudden, something changes. Verse 17, it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore or grievous, there was no breath left in him. The boy died. All of a sudden, he got sick. What, what happened? I mean, can you imagine? The mom is overwrought. Um, you know, she has a newfound faith, and this is great, and she's growing and learning, and now her son is, is dead. And Elijah, all of a sudden, the confusion and the questions got to understand that. You send me here to teach her about you. Um, she's willing, she's open-hearted, she responds, and you're, you're building her faith. And then you allow her son to die. And he said, please, um, uh, verse 18, she responds like most moms. She said, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Are you come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? She recognizes he's the man of God. He's getting labeled now as God's man. In essence, she's angry at God and taking it out on Elijah. And so now Elijah says, give me your son. And he takes him out of her bosom, carries him up to the loft. He was staying there like a little loft where he would sleep. And he put him on his bed. And now Elijah cries, God, this is uncharted territory for me. I, what's happening? And what you see is both of these individuals, the mom, the, the boy is certainly in a position he had never been in. He, he's dead. He'd been sick leading to his death. The mom is now in a whole new position where this faith of hers is now essentially going to be tried like never before. And Elijah, a man who has walked by faith and he's grown and now God's used what he's learned to to teach someone else. But what happens? God says, I'm going to now stretch you a bit further. I'm going to put you in a position that, in which you've never found yourself. And so what does he do? He cries to the Lord. Everybody's working through this. And he says, Lord, why have you brought evil on this widow woman? Uh, why have you killed her son? And the God said to him, and that's, by the way, the right answer. He prays, God, I don't understand this. I have questions. It doesn't make sense to me. And God speaks to him and says, stretch yourself out three times on the child. And he did. And the soul of the child came to him again. He's revived. He's alive. That's something Elijah had never done before. God answers Elijah. God shows himself strong. He shows he's the God of healing and, and of death and life. He uses Elijah as a tool to, to raise a young boy from the dead. Wow, how that must have empowered and encouraged Elijah. And Elijah finds he's now at another level in his faith. Meanwhile, the mom comes and takes her son. She sees that he's revived and she, that he's alive. And what does she say? Verse 24, and the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know, and you should circle those words, I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. I mean, I, I maybe I, I still had a few little doubts, but now there are no doubts. 
her faith has gone to another level. Now she is convinced she is a believer. And you know, God works on multiple levels. And just think of this little boy, what a story he's going to have to tell. Uh, uh, he'll have to tell uh, in the days to come how his life was changed. God is working on multiple levels. And, and here's the principle that as God moves us through experiences, it's necessary that we grow. That's his process so that we can effectively teach others. Um, it, 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 it's important for us to know his processes, even though things are going on, we don't understand. He is still working to reach people and he needs us to understand that he is not uh, uh, necessarily desiring for us to be comfortable in our lives. He is always going to push us a little further and take us to the next step, no matter who we are, whether we're a, a young boy, whether we're a, a, a brand new um, um, a believer or someone who's contemplating faith in, in God, or whether we're a prophet of God, it doesn't matter. It's all part of his process. And I hope that tonight you and I will understand God's got a process. We'll be willing to walk through it and let God continue to develop and deepen our faith, knowing there are people out there he wants us to reach. We need to go through what we're going through, and we need to know he'll keep pushing us because there's another level for us to attain, and he'll walk with us every step of the way. May he be God in our life. I hope that's an encouragement tonight. Let's pray. Lord, help us to let you have your will and way in our life. Thank you for your process. We don't always understand it, and we couldn't design it, but Lord, let us walk through it so that we may effectively reach those uh, who need you. And Lord, I pray that we'll uh, fulfill all that you have for us. Thank you for Elijah. Thank you for this widow woman coming to faith and, and her son, Lord, uh, being saved alive. And Lord, thank you for these records so that we might be encouraged. So bless us this week and uh, use us. Grow our faith, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. And God willing, we'll look forward to seeing you Friday as a couple, Sunday for church.